Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Um, so I'm going to take a few minutes and uh, walk you through um, generative AI agents that we have now deployed into production um, in multiple enterprises. Um, and when we look at um, the latest uh, developments over the last couple of months, we've seen Gen AI um, apply in multiple areas like marketing copies, brand creatives, advertisements, analytics code and productivity, and also video and GPT agents are coming out as, as pretty um, solid developments at this point in time. We are seeing a lot of enterprise use cases that can quickly unlock some value for you within like two or three months, literally. I mean, you can uh, deploy them into production and they start working from a business standpoint of view in, in, in under three months. And that's kind of the platform that we have developed. It's uh, Max.ai. It's available on the AWS Marketplace. It works in conjunction with AWS Bedrock to create and deploy these agents in a very compliant manner from your, uh, from within your enterprise. And when we look at some of the use cases that are coming out, there is obviously the baseline um, question and answer engine kind of a aspect that is there. But beyond that, if you want to look at unlocking voice of customer, which is coming from various streams, and then how do you look at the sentiment that's coming in, finding out some of the issues that might be affecting your customer experience on an ongoing basis, we are able to do that effectively. Uh, content marketing is a core use case that we have seen, um, and I'm going to show you a case study about it on how that's driving click-through rates and conversions um, across a range of email and mobile notifications as you go by. Um, these agents are also really powerful in doing training of um, employees, especially if you have a larger enterprise which has a lot of uh, reps or service staff. What's the kind of training regimen that's going on? What are the topics which are resonating? What is driving NPS in an effective manner? Um, that's another set of agents that are there. Uh, we're also seeing a lot of work that's going on from a customer service standpoint of view. So if you have L1, L2 reps that are running around, um, especially in the L2 layer, when a question comes up, usually your agents have to spend a lot of time in figuring out what the actual issue is and then what is the resolution for that is from technical documentation and other ways. And we are seeing GPT agents being able to do that fairly fast, come out with the top three or four resolutions, and then that speeds up the rep productivity in this case. Similarly, there are a few other things from a digital marketing standpoint of view and productivity standpoint of view. Those are specific use cases that are um, easily deployable and that, that can generate the returns that you're looking for. Now, the way we are able to do this is uh, because of the core agent architecture that uh, Max.ai is able to deploy on top of AWS. So for all the foundational models, we typically use what is available from a bedrock standpoint of view, which is already approved from an enterprise governance stand standpoint. So whether you want to use GPT-4 for a particular one, or Anthropic for a particular one, or for example, an open source set of models, we are able to pick and choose what's necessary for a given use case. And once you have the model framework in place, um, one of the things that the platform uh, brings to the table is looking at a wide variety of data sources which are sitting inside your enterprise and being able to quickly pull that together into a dynamic mesh which then gets converted into vector embeddings and, um, and that powers the agent as you go by. So that process, um, whether it's generative AI or classical AI or some of the other applications, we have always seen that that has been a really painful part within the enterprise, and that's where we have uh, done a lot of innovation to speed that process entirely. And then that goes from an LLM inference standpoint of view, and then we have put in a tool chain on top of it, which provides agents long-term memory, prevents them from hallucinating on the block. There is a lang chain that has been connected so that you can connect to various other applications that are necessary for the agent to operate. And when we are talking about generative AI, AI agents, the way we are looking at it is, you have a LLM core that is powering the agent, but then you also want to use either traditional AI or traditional automation techniques to be able to connect the agent to the rest of the enterprise systems that are there. 
and then allow it to execute a digital task. So essentially, take the generative AI core, connect to the traditional um, AI or machine learning aspects, and then it's able to execute a digital task in its entirety. And that task can be, you're sending a set of emails that are going on from, uh, from Salesforce, you're executing something as a marketing campaign from an Adobe standpoint of view, you're um, executing a task in Zendesk from a customer service standpoint of view. So there is a wide variety of productivity tasks the agents are able to execute in this case. And then all this is available both with a user interface that is easily usable by business. At the same time, they're also available as API endpoints, which means that if you have a legacy AI application, then we are able to plug these agents into those and then they automatically get upgraded with the, with the power of the LLM that's, that's doing it. So all this entirely is something that we are able to deploy via AWS Bedrock on top of it within roughly six to eight weeks at this juncture. So, so the reason why that is the case is because these are fairly easy to set up from the AWS marketplace itself. And then we are able to connect to a range of other um, systems that are there within the enterprise and then push that out um, from, a user, you, uh, from a business standpoint of view. Now this is a case study of where the agent is able to do subject line testing as well as marketing copy testing at scale. Um, and this is something that one of our customers has uh, productionized to almost eight million emails per week it's driving double-digit incrementality from a um, click-through as well as conversion standpoint of view. Forrester recently spoke with them and validated it and published it in their uh, report a couple of uh, months back. And the way this works is that there are a lot of inputs that we can look at it from a marketing standpoint of view. It could be um, about the campaigns that they're running, the traditional aspects that they have in terms of what they're feeding as a marketing content standpoint of view, the length, parts of speech, sentiment score, and a range of other things that the large language model is able to take as an input, and then generate the different subject lines. But then the subject lines are only one part, then you have to figure out who are the different cohorts of customers that you want to test them against, and then take the power of LLM, combine it with experimentation, connect it all the way to something like an Adobe target or something else, which then powers through a range of campaigns on a weekly basis to get some insights. Now one of the things that it's also able to do is, for those specific customer segments that you're targeting, we're also able to get more psychographic information. What do they like? What's the tone that will work for them? What is the kind of um, um, uh, type of uh, subject line or prose that works with them? All this is technically new information which is not available about the customers in the enterprise today, so it generates a lot of behavioral insights along with the marketing content that's going on. So what I'll do is essentially, we have developed a set of these agents which are ready to deploy. So there is a core um, agent called Maverick which does um, Q&A, kind of a engine, and this applies very well on multi, multiple documents and multimodal use cases. There is also Raven which does voice of customer. We got Kit which does more around customer compliance kind of issues as well as uh, uh, customer success and agent productivity, and then content marketing. So these are a couple of different agents which are available today on AWS Marketplace, which you can deploy very, very fast, I mean, within a month or two, depending upon your enterprise um, governance protocols and everything else. And um, we'll go through a couple of these agents. Um, we can't do the demo, but I have a quick video of each one of those so that you can see how they work in action. For example, if you take Maverick, a lot of times we are seeing close to 20 to 25% improvement in uh, productivity as you use some of these uh, agents from a um, knowledge services kind of a task standpoint of view. So if you look at Maverick, um, the way it works essentially is that you're taking a um, lot of the information that is available in the enterprise and then you're able to create a set of collections and then you can switch between the collections as you go by and then query them. And these collections, at the end of the day, are controlled, user access control. So specific groups can access only specific collections, and that's something that you can implement from an enterprise IT standpoint of view. These collections are very easy to manage. You can just upload a new collection, tell the agent what is the role or the description that it is doing. This can connect all the way back to 
Amazon S3, and um, and then the user interface gets deployed on top of it, and it's available for the business users to use it directly, right? And then it it connects to a wide variety of external sources too, so that's kind of the way the agent functions in this particular um, uh, in this particular case. So this is kind of a core question and answer uh, Q&A engine kind of a concept which can be deployed really fast, especially if you have different departments like within marketing, within branding, they want to take advantage of existing knowledge base and then drive productivity from there. A secondary um, and, and a more advanced one um, is called Kit. This works very well from a compliance standpoint of view or if you have, um, let's say, a large amount of information in the past, what you got to do is at the end of the month, you got to kind of do a really big NLP type of a project where you got a team which goes and gets all the data, figures out what the sentiment is, what the topics are, and then create a dashboard out of it. So now all that can be done with a generative AI agent. And then the way it works largely is you got um, a compliance summary, how the agent performs. You can define what these different topics are on an ongoing basis right from a user interface saying that, I'm interested about a product interest, or are there customers who are talking about security concerns that they're looking at, and um, other things that they're, that they're asking. And these questions or these topics can be defined directly by a business user, and then the LLM agent and the generative AI agent keeps monitoring for these topics on an ongoing basis, and then reports back saying that, here are all the issues that have appeared in the last one day, one week, or however you want to see from a business standpoint of view. Similarly, we're looking at um, content marketing. So this one is an interesting one. This takes um, generative AI to generate content and then combines with experimentation. This is a case study that we spoke about. It can do a range of things. It can create images. It can create full marketing copies. It can generate subject lines given a topic. So the idea here is uh, use the uh, LLMs to generate the content and then combine it with an experimentation engine, look at the target set of groups, and then push those content all the way to the marketing engine and see how that's, uh, that's scaling up. Um, and one of the things that we are noticing is that the large language models keep getting more and more powerful on an ongoing basis, right? So any of the use cases that I've showed so far, some of these are going to get commoditized and more new and advanced use cases will appear. So what we wanted to do was that, uh, can we give you a build your own agent capability where pretty much anybody in your enterprise can um, go in and create your own agent and it will just function like a GPT store but in a very compliant manner, it will work inside your enterprise with the governance protocols that your IT as well as the security team uh, approves. And the way it functions is that you go and do a couple of clicks and it makes a new agent for you and, um, and then you're able to use it as a business user in this case. So the way it works essentially is that you can select whatever model that you want, whether it's GPT-4 or Anthropic or certain other things. There are like factory settings, you can use them. And then the entire architecture that I showed you before becomes like a tool chain which gets printed um, and then it makes a new agent out of it. And now, there are different types of capabilities these agents can do. It can be Q&A, it can be like a chatbot kind of a functionality, but it can also do basic data analysis very well when you're using the GPT-4 code interpreter capability at the back end, or equivalent LLM model, it can build that agent. Now, one of our customers has like 100 different agents that they've built, and uh, they're just being used by different um, business users uh, pretty much on an ongoing basis, right? So, so technically, it's like an army of AI agents which are getting created for different business user groups on an ongoing basis. And the rate at which the progress is happening from a large language model standpoint of view, what we expect is that there are going to be more and more basic use cases which will get commoditized, and they will be served by this kind of a interface uh, this is a very affordable, easy to use um, agent. So it's just a flat fee on a monthly basis. There is no limitation on how many agents get created. And then they can be used for different purposes, whether it's marketing or branding or a set of 
um, data analytics co-pilots that you're doing, and each one can be deployed into specific um, departments. So supply chain gets its own one within supply chain. Let's say there are somebody who's doing safety stock, then they get their own thing. There is marketing which is doing some sort of a specific marketing analytics. They get their own pocket agent. There is uh, uh, product teams which are using product documentation. They get their own agent. So it's kind of a army of AI agents that can be deployed within your enterprise across all your departments on an ongoing basis, and then uh, just available for you and for your um, IT teams to be able to manage that along with the business user groups. So it kind of brings the full power of generative AI agents uh, to your doorstep, which you can use. And then the other agents that I've shown earlier were essentially more advanced use cases which cannot be handled by this sort of agent builder in this case, right? So that's what I wanted to share with you today. Uh, this is available on the AWS Marketplace and uh, which can be downloaded from there directly, and you can install it within your own enterprise environment. It's an enterprise-only product. And uh, we have a booth here um, on the other corner, ZS Associates. If you're interested to know more, a couple of my colleagues will be there, and um, we're happy to take any questions, show you more of the demos if you're interested in, and then, um, and then um, if, if there is interest, let us know. Thank you very much.